Hello, welcome to this floor plan drawing training webinar. It's Peter Watson from Landmark Estate Agency Services. We're going to show you today how to draw a floor plan using MetroPix. We will draw one live from start to finish. We'll do a little two bedroom Victorian bay fronted mid terrace, uh, which we all know the layout of. Um, before we do that, we'll just look at what's required when we're at the property measuring up. There's some useful information we can pass on. We'll draw the floor plan live from start to finish on the system. Then we'll just show you how to work with the floor plan at the end, okay? And we'll keep any questions and answers to the end. So, we go to the property, we take an instruction, take house onto the market, and we'll do photographs, we'll measure up, we'll do the sales particulars. And while we're there, we'll do a simple little sketch of the property. And I stress the word simple. I had a chap a couple of weeks back who was saying it's taken him ages to do the sketch. And he was measuring everything. He was measuring the width and depth of the chimney breast, how far that was from the end wall, the width of these double doors. So no wonder it was taking him an age. And Basically, I think the term to remember in the back of your mind is visual accuracy. So with regard to sort of sizing of fireplaces, doors, windows, visually correct is absolutely fine. Just spend a couple of extra seconds on the sketch, getting it visually correct. So if these kitchen units look as though they come two thirds the length of the wall, just draw them as you see them. We might look at this fireplace when we get back to the office and think, well, it looks a bit skinny and shallow. But if that's what we're drawn at the property, that's what we would create with Metropix. With regard to room, Measuring, obviously, we've got to get that measured accurately. So with the living room, we can see it's 23 foot 7 by 11 foot 2. Just pop the measurements against each wall. There's nothing worse than having a sort of 10 foot 6 by 10 foot room square, square room, and you don't know which wall's which. So measurements against each wall. Um, on this example, someone's used a ruler as well, but freehand is absolutely fine. But all we're saying is don't go spending an age. We do provide graph paper on our website. So I'll show you where that is just before we start the training. But uh, we've done our sketch at the property. We come back, we log into our Metropix account and we create the floor plan room by room. We get one room to the right shape and size, add another room and build up the layout. And then we can pop a few doors and windows onto the floor plan. It says 10 minutes for the average sized house, which is completely realistic. It's a very quick, easy to use system. So let's, uh, let's start drawing a floor plan. I just want to open up uh, another page. We've got our own training account that we use for demonstration purposes. Works exactly the same as your own account. And so when you log in, it'll bring you to the My Plans page and it will give you a list of the 20 most recent floor plans that you've drawn. If you need something a bit older, you can see 20 most recent floor plans listed. Click the search for more link and you can search by keyword on the next page to find any older properties that uh, you've drawn on your own account in the past. I mentioned information on the website. If you go to the home page, the so top left, click home. And then we've got a section called support. So home and support, and then just look in the training material section and click view training material. So home, support, view training material. And this is the graph paper I mentioned. It's what we call sketch template. If we click the download button, it opens up a PDF that we can just zoom in a little bit. You'll see it works better than graph paper. It's a series of light gray crosses that form a grid. So that shows the sketch more clearly. OK, and on the right hand side, we've got some symbols, doors, windows all the way down. And we've got a second page, a continuation sheet as well. So that's the sketch template that's on the website. We've also got sketch guidelines and examples, some information about how to create the floor plan when you're sketching at the property and some guidelines that you might find useful, useful so you can refer to that as well. But that's on the, on the website, homepage support and view training material. To get back to our plans, as I said at the start, when you log into your account, it brings you to the My Plans page. So if we click Login, it'll take us straight back to our Plans page. Now we're going to draw a new floor plan. So we've got a link top left, which says New Floor Plan. So I'll click that now. And step one asks us to enter the uh, property address. So for sake of anything better to write, let's just put one Stockport Road, that'll do. When you put the address there, I would suggest you put the full address, including the postcode. Um, it's entirely up to you, though. It's really just so you can find the floor plan again in the future. But I'll explain why a full address is better and then click next. And step two asks us how we want to create the floor plan. Now we've got three options. Draw online now, starting with a blank page. We'll click that in a few seconds and draw a floor plan from scratch. But we've got a couple of other options. Open the existing plan from the search results. Well, Metropix have been going for since 2005. And in that time, 
thousands of customers have drawn literally millions of floor plans and we're over ten and a half million and it might be this one stop port road has been on the market in the past and perhaps the agent that marketed it previously could have had used Metropix to draw the floor plan in which case we will have a matching floor plan in what we call plan bank okay it's our bank of plans of well, previously drawn plans by other customers and you can see we've got one there from 9th of november 2016 and an older one from 2009 so logically you click up the click on the most recent one but uh, it might be that if one, one wasn't there, you might think, well, number 17 is a similar layout. I'll, I'll click on that one. So Plan Bank can save you having to draw the floor plan from scratch. It's a really useful time saver. And there's, as I say, over 10 and a half million floor plans in the, in the bank now. So there's usually something that matches. Third option is to use auto draw. That's where we draw it for you from a sketch that you send to us. That's an additional charge. So only click that if you're happy to pay the extra or you're authorized to pay the extra. So we're going to draw the floor plan ourselves. So we'll click the start drawing button now. And this loads up the page that we call Plan Maker. There we go. So I'll just talk you around this page. We've got a blue box that gives us hints and tips and guidance about creating the floor plan, telling us to please begin by pressing the add room icon at the bottom of the screen. And you can see we've got a room symbol. As you hover your mouse over those, they change to add room, add stairs, undo and redo. In the bottom right hand corner, we're working on a two foot grid. So each one of these squares is two feet. So clearly we're working in feet and inches. Uh, now, when you go to the property, you'll measure up in what you're most comfortable with, and it could be metric. So you can draw the floor plan in what you're happy with. So if you choose metric, the grid changes slightly. We're now working on a 50 centimeter grid, and each one of these squares is half a meter. So working what you're comfortable with, at the end of the day, the system will provide the measurements in both on the finished plan anyway. So I'm afraid we'll stick with feet and inches for now. We've got a bank of symbols that we'll come to later, and a floors tab that we'll come to in due course. So we're going to draw a little Victorian bay fronted, two bed, mid terrace, upstairs bathroom. We all know the layout of those. Um, when we start the floor plan, we always start on the ground floor. And because we create the floor plan room by room, we tend to start in one corner and work diagonally across room by room. So what we'll do, we'll start with the lounge at the front of the property. So we can click add room and we can create our first room. You can see it says first room. And, and this is going to give us a ready-made square room as a starting point to work out from. Now on the left-hand side, we've got various room types, hallway, reception, kitchen, down through garage and outbuilding. Just choose the type of room that it's going to be. So I said it's going to be a lounge. So logically, we just put a dot next to reception, which I'll do now. As soon as we do, we get some room, reception type room name options come up, dining room, drawing room, family room, etc. So we can just choose from this list. Um, it's, they're pre-populated just to save you having to type everything in from scratch. It'd be a bit tedious. But if the room name that you wanted wasn't there, had someone once wanted to call one a snug, just type it in manually. We've got users all over the world that use Metropix and they'll type in their own language and the system accepts it. You might even have a small lobby in the middle of a house, door in, door out. And you think, well, there's no point naming it. In which case, don't. Hallway type room and leave it blank. For this exercise, we'll call it our lounge. That's fine. So room type, room name. You can ignore ceiling height. If we're dealing with that, you'll be on the phone to us with a query and click OK. And so, as I say, there's our ready-made first room. It's an eight foot two inch square room. How do you know, you ask? You, not, not, not obvious there's measurements on there. Pop your mouse on the graph paper, hold the left mouse button down and the measurements pop up. OK, so when I release the mouse now, they disappear. So we want to get this to the right shape and size. So you'll see as we hover our mouse over any wall, the wall turns red and a double arrow appears. And the nature of the system, as I say, is drag and drop. So hold the left mouse button down and now we can drag this wall out. And as I move this wall out, the measurements on the adjacent wall are increasing. So when we get to the right width, we can just release the mouse like so. 14 foot eight, perhaps go a little bit further. Whatever it needs to be, you can just tidy up and get it exact. And we can increase the depth accordingly to whatever that needs to be. OK, um, when we're there, release the mouse. And again, mouse on the graph paper, hold the mouse button down and check the measurements. For the sake of this exercise, let's just imagine that that was 14 foot nine. OK, um, I've gone to 14 foot 10. I can fiddle around and get the wall back an inch, but I'll leave it at 14 foot 10 just to make the point that when you're drawing the floor plan, don't get paranoid that every room has got to be exactly to the inch. Um, OK, we want to draw the floor plan as accurately as we can, but sometimes you might have two rooms next to each other and the, 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 the measurements vary by an inch with different plaster finishes. So you can't always get it absolutely perfect. So 
as I say, don't get obsessed that it's got to be absolutely perfect. Sometimes you can't, and I'll explain why at the end. So what we're going to do now, we're going to add some more rooms. As I say, that first room was just a starting point to work out from. So we'll put a hallway down the left-hand side. We'll imagine we come in a front door at the bottom and walk down the left-hand side of the lounge. So we'll click Add Room. For every room that we create from now on, we get this little red dot that follows the mouse around the page. Simply pop that red dot in the corner of the new room. You see it just snaps into place when you get there. Left click and hold, drag this mouse to the opposite diagonal corner like so. And when we're at the right size, release the mouse and we can name it hallway type room. We'll choose hall from the list, that's fine, and click OK. So we're gonna put a dining room behind here. We're gonna put a kitchen behind that and went out of space very quickly. So we can drag the plan down the page by putting our mouse on the graph paper. Left click and hold, yes, the measurements pop up, but it's like we're dragging the graph paper sheet around. Just left click and hold and drag it to where it needs to be. And now we can click add a room. Little red dot, move it to the corner of the new room. Left click and hold, simply drag the opposite diagonal corner like so. Release the mouse. This will be our reception type room and we'll choose dining room from the list and click OK. So very quickly, we can create rooms. Now, perhaps this is a through hallway, front to back. Uh, we've got the stairs on the left-hand side and what between the stairs and the dining room to get through to the kitchen. So we can extend this wall up and you'll see the walls snap together as they join up as well and just drag this to the end like so. And if we drag the plan down the page a little bit more, we can pop a kitchen on the back. So add room, little red dot, left click and hold, drag the opposite corner, release the mouse, kitchen type room, kitchen defaults into the description, ignore ceiling height, and click OK. Now, sometimes you'll have rooms within rooms. You'll have an ensuite in the corner of a, a master bedroom, perhaps, or a cupboard in the corner of a room. Let's just imagine we've got a little cupboard at the end of the hallway, a little storage cupboard, a little under stairs cupboard, door in from the kitchen. I've always thought it's important to show cupboards and storage on my floor plans. So we'll still create it as a room. So we'll click Add Room. As I say, it's only small, just in this area here. But when we release the mouse, oops, we can name it accordingly. We'll choose this uh, storage type option from the list. So it's a storage type room being a cupboard, and we've got the cupboard option there as well. And click OK. So there's our cupboard created. Now you're going to say, great, that's great, but what do we do about L-shaped rooms and bay windows? So let's just look at doing some of those. Let's imagine this kitchen's L-shaped. Perhaps this wall at the back comes out a little bit. We know at the moment if I drag that wall, the whole lot moves, which is no good. I just want to move part of this wall out. So the technique for that, very simple. Pop your mouse on the wall, move it to the point where the wall breaks, and all you do is just simply double left click. Quick double left click of the mouse, and it leaves a little white marker, a little white dot on the wall. And now only those sections either side will highlight red. So that's a quick double left click on the wall. And now if I left click and hold and drag that wall, we can drag it down or out as the case may be to make our um, to make our recess uh, three foot recess will do. Or we can tidy up as we need to. So that's how to make an L shaped room. If we had a bay window, we'd do the same thing except we'd double left click on each side of the bay. So double left click once, double left click twice, and now we've got the two little white dots. And of course, only that middle section is going to highlight red. So left click and hold and drag this out so we can create a create a perhaps a little two foot bay. There we go. Um, that's great. That's a square base. Sometimes you'll take a 1930s semi onto the market and perhaps the walls come in at angles each side. So rather than putting your mouse over the walls, pop your mouse over the dot in the corner. Left click and hold and drag that along. And then when we get to the right sort of angle, release the mouse. And if we do the same on the other side and make sure the measurements on each angle is the same, we'll know it's symmetrical. So there we go, two foot nine inches each side. Oops, a bit too far. There we go. So we can make any shape room that we want to. You know, sometimes get those octagonal shaped conservatories, don't you? So we double click twice on the wall, two little white dots. We don't need to drag the wall out to make the square bay, but we can drag the dots out to create the angles. You sort of get the idea. So we can do any shape room that we want to really within reason. If you should go wrong, click the undo button. This will undo up to the last 20 actions that you've done. And you can go back to where you were and pick up. But there's our ground floor drawn. We're quite happy with that. We're now ready to start popping a few symbols onto the floor plan, a few doors and windows. And uh, these are all under the title of basic symbols. You can see here, basic symbols. We've got a door, double door window. It tells you what they are as you hover your mouse over them down through hobs and sinks and uh, a fireplace. There's lots of symbols on the system. If you go to all symbols, there's a few extra sort of sink options and there's an Argo and corner shower, B-Day, that sort of thing. And uh, if you go to all symbols, it breaks it down by category. So if we click on kitchen for argument's sake, there's every kitchen related symbol that's on the system. 
Okay, we'll stick with the basic ones for now. We want to put a front door onto the bottom of the hallway there. So choose the symbol that you want. In this case, door works for exter external and internal doors. Left click and hold, and we just drag that door onto the floor plan like so. When we're there, release the mouse and that's it. Left click and hold and just drag your door, the symbol that you want onto the floor plan. So we can quickly pop a few doors onto our floor plan here, like so. Um, once we've dragged some doors on, we might want to put a, pop a few windows on there as well. And you can see that every symbol's got a blue button. Okay, they serve two purposes. Firstly, as you hover your mouse over that blue button, it turns red and a hand appears. Okay, so clearly, we, as it turns red, if it was in the wrong position, we can left click and hold and drag that to a new position and move it around as the case may be. Or if we want to change the properties of a particular symbol to make it bigger or with doors, perhaps we might want to change the hinge side or the swing direction. Perhaps this outside door, the hinge is on the dining room side and perhaps this cupboard door opens out into the kitchen. We can, rather than drag the symbol, we can hold our mouse over the blue button when it turns red and left click once. And a single left click will open up a door properties box or a properties box for that particular symbol. With doors, we've got hinge side and swing direction under swap. So if we click the swing direction button, you see the door flips the other way, just close the box. So with the external door, click on the blue button, click on the hinge side, job done, close the box. This window on the front of the bay is too small, much too small. So again, we click on the blue button and we can size symbols. You can see we've got an opening width slider bar. So this defaults to the length of wall that it's on. OK, so all we do is just drag this to the end, left click and hold, drag that slider bar, and it now fills the wall up with the window. We can close the box. We can pop some more windows on each angle at the side. We've got a fireplace symbol that we can pop onto there, onto our lounge. Uh, with a fireplace, obviously there's width and depth. So if we click on the blue button, yes, we can size it by increasing these slider bars accordingly. OK, or you can put your mouse over the handles in the corner, left click and hold and drag those to as big or small as the symbol needs to be like so. OK, once we're there, you can see there we've drawn it to exactly two foot 11 by one foot. We've not measured that at the property. It looks visually correct. That's the key thing. Now, don't want to get too advanced on these sessions, but uh, there is a nice little shortcut we can show you where you can clone a symbol. You can make an exact copy of it. Um, let's imagine perhaps we've got a, a, a fireplace in the dining room that matches the one in the lounge. So rather than go dragging a new fireplace from here and click on the blue button, we can clone this symbol. OK, and it's what we call control and drag in the bottom left of your keyboard you'll see a control button, CTRL. I'm going to hold that down on the keyboard now. And so holding the control button down, now when I drag that fireplace, it doesn't move it. It makes a clone, makes an exact copy. OK, that's a really useful little technique to get used to. It, it enables you to work in a smaller area. I'll explain what I mean. Perhaps we've got a dining room on the back, a window on the back of the dining room here that matches the one in the kitchen. So we can drag a window across onto our dining room. That looks a bit big. OK, so we can click on the blue button and just size it by the handles accordingly. To close that properties box off, just click off the plan on the graph paper. That's got rid of that. Hold the control button down and drag them onto the kitchen. So we only worked in this small area here, but it speeds things up quite a lot. And in the kitchen, we can just pop a few base units. You'll go to your own level of detail in terms of your floor plans. As I say, there are lots of symbols on the system, furniture and all sorts, but I think basic floor plans is all we need. People just need to see how to navigate around the property. And I think kitchen units, hobs and sinks, and perhaps a bathroom suite is all you need to go to. So we can extend that base, those base units just short of the door. And you only need one symbol for each one of base units, not a symbol for every single base unit, OK? And uh, we can now pop hob and a sink onto our wall like so. Uh, one thing with base units, sometimes you have an island unit that floats in the middle of a room. And you see when you try to put a, a base unit onto the floor, it just sticks to the walls all the while. No matter where you go, it just wants to attach itself to the wall. So drag one onto the floor plan and then click on the blue button. And we've got an option to stick to walls. So if we untick that, it now frees itself from the wall. OK, and now it's not stuck to the walls. So if we click on the blue button, we can rotate it. We can resize it by the handles. We can even put rounded ends on it. There's all sorts we can do. You'll get used to this at your leisure as you play around and close the box. So there's our island unit, OK? Um, and to get rid of a symbol, just click on the blue button, delete it. It's a delete symbol for a delete option for every symbol. Um, and that's it, really. Sometimes if you needed to remove a section of wall, perhaps this is a through room. We could have called this lounge area and dining area. We've got an opening symbol that we can just drag onto our floor plan. 
and this puts a, a, a break in the wall. So if we can click on the blue button, it might be a door width break, perhaps on the uh, on the left hand side, or on the right hand side, or if we click on the blue button. We can extend it all the way across and remove the wall completely. Or there may be brick piers each side that support the RSJ, like so. And yeah, OK, it's exactly nine foot seven, but we've not measured it. It looks visually correct. That's the key thing. So we've drawn our ground floor. We're happy with that. We're now ready to start our first floor. And I mentioned the floors tab at the start. And I'm going to click this for the first time now. A new floor will be added named first floor, which we can rename if we need to. So we OK that message. And it gives us a brand new sheet of graph paper but with the pastel outline of the floor below in blue. Now this doesn't show on the finished plan. It's purely a guide for you to work to. If you like, the system tries to picture your floor plan in 3D. So it wants you to draw your first floor rooms directly over the ground floor rooms, working to the same footprint. Now, you saw on the ground floor, we started in one corner and worked diagonally across. With the first floor, it's a good idea to start with the landing first. Get the landing drawn first and then work out from there. So we'll create our landing in this area here, like so. Hallway type room and choose landing from the list and click OK. Now, we can't put stairs onto our floor plan until we've got a room to connect them from and to on each floor, which we have now. And to change floors, just click on the image of the floor that you want to go to on the left hand side. So you can switch instantly between the floors. Now we'll pop some stairs onto our floor plan. We'll put a straight flight of stairs in. We're going to click the stairs wizard, wizard in a second or two. When we add stairs, as I say, it takes us to a step by step wizard. And we talk to the system in terms of compass points where we're heading north, south, east or west as we go up and down the stairs. So as we're walking down our floor plan here, we were heading north down the hallway and we'll continue north as we go up the stairs. So add stairs, click that. Which floors do the stairs run between? Which floors the bottom step on? The ground floor. Which floors the top step on? The first floor. So telling the system we're going from ground to first. When you click them, they highlight. If it's a spiral staircase, we can tick that box. It's a rarity. So we don't need to in this instance. Ground to first and then click next. Looking at your sketch, imagine a person standing at the bottom of the stairs. As the person steps onto the bottom step, in which direction are they facing? Well, we said we're heading north as we go up the stairs. So click the north facing set of footprints and click next. And it asks us to move the step to the correct position on the ground floor. So we OK that message. And that's what it's talking about. A step that's following the mouse around the page, pointing north and saying up. And we line this up on our ground floor, just touching the left hand wall and left click the mouse now. And that set it. This time our person is at the top of the stairs looking down. As the person steps onto the top step, in which direction are they facing? Well, it's a straight flight of stairs. We're heading north going up. We must be facing south coming down. So south facing set of footprints, click next. And we simply pop that on the first floor landing. It takes us there automatically. Left click the mouse and finish. The stairs have been added successfully. So we click finish. And job done. There's our stairs. Very easy. And uh, that's how to pop stairs on your floor plan. I will show you once more very quickly, only because this time what we'll do, we'll put a turn in at the top of the stairs. So when we get to here, it won't be the end. We'll carry on round the corner, round some angled steps. So if we were coming down the stairs, we'd be in the middle of the landing at the top, facing west. Take one step west, come turn round the angled steps and then come south. So we can remove the stairs by clicking on the blue button and selecting delete. But there's a step on each floor, so easier just to click undo as it was the last action that we did. So very quickly, add stairs. It's exactly the same this time for the ground floor. So ground to first, click next. Heading north, as we did last time, click next and OK. And pop the ground floor step, touching the left hand wall. Left click the mouse. And this time, though our top step, we're going to be heading west. Just one that one step, and then we come around the angled steps. West facing, click next. And we line this one up in the middle of our landing at the top of the stairs. When I click the mouse now, it won't be finished because it's worked out it's got to put a turn in to join the stairs together. Does the staircase have some steps at angles as in the diagram? Yes, it does. If it was a flat landing, we'd say no. Yes, click next. Now it's finished. Stairs have been added successfully. So we click finish and there we go. You can see it's put the top step in while we're heading west. We've got the angle steps as well. And from there, we can click add, add the rest of our rooms. We can pop our bedroom one down the bottom here, bedroom O and E or bedroom one, whatever, and OK, and pop our bedroom two just here. So very quickly, we can create these rooms in no time at all. As I say, 10 minutes, the average size floor plan is completely realistic. We've got a bathroom on the back here as well.
like so. Now, it's only a training exercise. It's a bit random, I know. But sometimes you might take a, a flat onto the market with a balcony or a, a penthouse apartment with a sun terrace or a roof garden or perhaps an older sort of property such as this where they perhaps reinforce the kitchen roof and we've got a sun deck and we might have some, might have some double doors that lead out onto this flat area. So we want to create an external area on our floor plan, such as a sun deck or a balcony. And so we can still create it as a room, add room, little red dot, left click and hold, drag the opposite corner, and we will choose this option halfway down. It's a balcony type one, okay? And we can choose balcony or roof garden. Sun deck works fine on this one, and click okay. So there's our sun deck. Works the same as any other room where we can, the walls turn red, and we can double click on this wall here to line it up with the floor below and make the irregular shape. So that's how to make an external area. Using the balcony type room, you'll see it comes out cross-hatched on the finished plan. And remember your bay windows using, again, working to the same footprint of the floor below, double left click, double left click, two little white dots, and just drag that wall out. And so that gives us our square bay or an angled bay. Uh, you might say, what do we do if it's a curved bay, a curved window, a bow window? So let's just show you those. As I say, I don't want to get too advanced on these training sessions, but it's worth knowing these come up quite regularly. Under the Edit tab, we've got the option to draw a curved wall. OK, so I'm going to choose that now. And with drawing a curved wall, we pretty much draw the curve ourselves. We've got our little red dot that follows the mouse around the page. Just move that dot to where the curve starts. Left click and hold. And as we move our mouse, keeping the mouse button held down, we're drawing a curve. OK, and when we get to the end, it's not a very good curve, but the system realizes that when I release the mouse now, it smooths it all out and makes a nice smooth curve. So let's just undo that. Edit, draw curved wall, little red dot, left click and hold. It could be a shallow curve, not coming out so far. Release the mouse now. You get the idea. You don't even need to be good at drawing curves. You could tell the system I want to draw a curved wall and I want to start here, come out this distance, come across to about here. And finish there. So I've only drawn a box, but it gives it the starting point, the ending point, and the depth. And from there, we can just add a window onto our curve, like so. Click on the blue button. Anything with curves doesn't quite know where to end, and it can carry on past the end. So be a little bit more careful when you're sizing them. So that's it. Um, we had a fireplace on the ground floor, and uh, if you've got a, a blocked up chimney breast, you can use the block symbol. Well, bottom left of your symbols there, just drag that onto our floor plan. And you remember the sketch we looked at at the very outset. So if we were sizing that, it would have been something like this, quite shallow and skinny. So you can size it as you need to, visual accuracy. I think that'll do for my chimney breast on the first floor and close the box. And remember control and drag, control and drag, and it makes a clone. So there we go. We're pretty much in the home straight. Let's just imagine we haven't got time to finish off this floor plan and perhaps we want to come back and finish it up, finish it later. It's going to need to save it as work in progress. Perhaps we've got an appointment to go to. So we can save it as an unfinished plan. Under the file menu, we've got the option to save unfinished plan. So all you do, choose that and just click save. So file, save unfinished plan and just click save. The system the We'll now connect with our metric system and it's saved a version to the system. Your floor plan has been saved successfully. So we OK that message. Doesn't take us out of the floor plan. So if you want a really big one or you want to back up your work occasionally, you can do. But now when we click file and exit, we won't be prompted that our changes will be lost. So we go off, we do our appointment, we log back into our Metropix account, and we just need to, at the top there to show unfinished floor plans. It wasn't a completed one. So click to show unfinished floor plans. And there we go. Open floor plan. And in five or six seconds, it loaded all straight back up again. We can go up to the first floor, go back to our, oops, go back to our symbols and just pop a few more doors and windows, whatever we need to, just to complete the floor plan. So there we go. We're pretty much done. And remember, if you've got sort of built-in cupboards, create them as a room. If there's, if there's a run of wardrobes, we can create them as a room there. Storage type and perhaps W for wardrobe. And again, this is where your control and drag comes in really useful. We might have three sets of sort of sliding doors that match. So one, control and drag to copy, control and drag again to copy. You get the idea, but nice and quick. So there we go. We've drawn the floor plan. We're now ready to plan complete it and uh, get the finished version. So we've got our tick box in the top right hand corner, plan complete. We're going to tick this, click this for the first time now. I'll talk you through this process. There's two screens to the plan complete process. Property 
details. Property address and reference number, one stock poor road. That's fine. That's correct. It's all spelled properly. Uh, public property description just means you want to put any text or wording onto the floor plan. It's rare that you'll need to use it, OK? Uh, if you want to put the address on the floor plan, you can copy from private and it copies the address or the street name without the house number. Or you can enter something manually, perhaps uh, any text you type will appear here i'll do um we'll put that on there so you just see where it appears on the finished floor plan um the system can calculate the floor area of the property as well so if you've drawn the floor plan accurately it'll take all the calculations from each room and add them all together to give us a, a cumulative area for the property so if you don't want the area or you're not confident that it's been drawn that accurately click don't share the area but we'll leave it on there you can enter a figure manually if you want to in either square meters or square feet but we'll leave it uh, to show the estimated area and we can add a compass rose or a north arrow or a direction arrow so if we stood facing the property and got the compass out and it pointed to say eight o'clock Add direction arrow, we've got a dial that we choose which way our north arrow is going to face, so somewhere about there, and that's set it, and we click OK. So that's the first screen. Um, I'm going to click OK. It will prompt me to check the wording on the public description because that's going to appear on the finished floor plan if you choose to put it there. So we click OK, and the public description for this property is now any text you type will appear here. So that's great, just made sure it's correct. OK, that. Second screen gives us a list of all the rooms that we drew. In the order that we drew them and we've got our lounge here 14 foot 10 by 15 foot one i'm going right back to the very beginning now do you remember we said it perhaps it was 14 foot nine but we just did an inch out it's here that we can click on that measurement delete the 10 and type in a nine it doesn't start moving walls around it doesn't start making a mess of my floor plan it just puts the right measurement into that particular room something else i can do is add text after each measurement so it's width first depth second perhaps it's a maximum width and into bay for the depth and that's optional you don't have to put text in but if you want to it just clarifies the measurements and what we can also do is show measurement arrows on the finished plan so we've put a tick box there we can drag these around by the blue triangles and tell people look we're measuring into the alcoves and we're either measuring to exclude the bay we're measuring into the bay and once you've got that room correct move on to the next one the hallway and six foot 11 by 28 feet sounds completely misleading so it's say no measurements the dining room we can assume is correct but the kitchen we put a three foot recess on the back there and we should really measure to the hob wall so we can perhaps say instead of 17 foot two it's 14 foot two and tell people with measurement arrows no we're measuring to the hob wall and to this window wall so work your way down the list i won't bother with the other measurements but we'll tweak those the bathroom and the sun deck we can uh, set as no measurements incidentally if you don't want any measurements on your floor plan at all you can deal with this page at the click of a button and just click remove all measurements at the top but now we'll now click send to metropix and that's going to fire it across the system it'll give it a reference number and floor plans take about 25 seconds to go through okay so it's not 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 long at all and we've got a refresh button it's queued for processing at the moment you can see please click refresh to see if it's available oh crikey that's ready that's gone that's gone through about 10 seconds that's really quick um so there we go there's our floor plan drawn um if you looked at the floor plan and thought there's an error or the seller wanted something changing or you've missed something, you can click open edit and go straight back into the floor plan and make whatever changes and amendments aren't charged for. But if we're happy with the floor plan, we can now save the floor plan. And uh, we've got the option to download. You can see under the, in the download floor plan section, the resolution is set to high, the format set to JPEG. So we're gonna save the floor plan, download it from the Metropix website and save it to our computer in much the same way as you upload photos from your camera and save them that way. So you'll probably have your own property folder to save them to, but click download. And I won't bother to save it anywhere, but you could choose save as or what have you. Let's just open that image straight away. And you can see what the finished floor plan looks like so there we go that's what we've just drawn in those few seconds you can see our compass rose pointing to eight o'clock we've got our sun deck come out as cross hatched as an external area with a thick bathroom wall and you can see the measurements we've got our measurement arrows in the lounge um 15 foot one into bay by 14 foot nine maximum so it hasn't messed up the floor plan and uh, all the symbols there you can see if we zoom in a bit further we've got the floor areas calculated ground floor 709 first floor 100 square feet or more or less and the reason is it hasn't included the sun deck that's external so it doesn't include it the, the floor area calculations are the internal usable floor space within the property and we've got a total floor area and if we zoom in a bit further you can see any text you type will appear here so that's where we put our public description 
Some agents use that to put, not to scale or for illustrative purposes only, but we've got a, a pretty watertight disclaimer that comes with these floor plans accurate, uh, uh, automatically. And we can change that. That's our full disclaimer. There is a minimal disclaimer that you can choose through your account preferences that says uh, for illustrative purposes only, not to scale. And I think appliance is not tested or something. And if we zoom in on our floor plan, we've got sort of bedroom one filling the screen. It's getting pixelated and grainy. But if we zoom out to a point where that's clear, about now, that's quite a sharp image and we zoomed quite a long way into the property. So that on any website or sales particulars is going to be a really good, sharp, high resolution image. And there's the floor plan drawn. That's it. If we click my plans, you'll now see that, that appears in our list of completed plans on Stockport Road. So when you log in, you just click view floor plan to access it. And that's it. That's the that's how to draw a floor plan with Metropix. Uh, we'll come on to questions and answers. I'm going to end the recording now. But uh, Thanks very much for your time, everybody, and we'll end it now. Thank you.